Right. So what what it's not a proposal, it's going to happen. Yeah. And so what it basically is in the HBV, there's you can you April, apply and April you have, it starts. Right. And then you can like it takes a month months to get through the process. But originally there was like a way where if you paid about a thousand two hundred and fifty, you could bump up the line and get a fifteen minute, fifteen day expedited review, which the big tech companies, you know, a thousand dollars is nothing. Uh -huh. So yeah. pay and ex expedite people. The expedition process will no longer happen for the next like six months at the very minimum. And the reason that the, uh, that the administration and the office is saying is because there's such a backlog of HB1s that they want to actually focus on getting through the backlog some rather than just going through the only the expedited with limited resources, which, you know, on the surface does sound like it sort of makes sense. And, um, Trump's discussion of like does does HB one need reforms? Yes, yes it does. All of immigration needs reforms, but that's like one of the most hot potato. That's the most hot potato of political issues. It absolutely needs updates and reforms, but it is also absolutely one of the ways in which you bring people. One of the downsides of this is that if you uh, like you if you can't if you want to switch jobs you need to go through that HB1 process again and you can't expedite now and you cannot expedite now so you a whole could, family has to get ripped out of San Jose or Cupertino or San Francisco wherever they are or more indentured servitude like because yeah. you you're at you're at Microsoft and you have an HB1 and you get an offer from Google you can't like switch after th like 15 days because you have to go to Canada and hang out in Toronto like a criminal for like 9 months or you just can't at all and what happens to your kids who are in school you know, this is this is where like it's really yeah, infuriating for me. This is an interesting announcement, but yeah. this the larger question is what actually happens to these like yeah. uh, skilled worker visas at all, right. right? So this is just like you can't get the you can't pay a thousand bucks. This to is get how he special starts. Processing. This is Trump's process, right? Like he starts with some low hanging fruit. Sometimes he goes all the way, but it seems like now the administration is going to chip away, right? Like let's just this is something we can well, change. But, doesn't H-1B go on a lottery system in April every year? So if if it's almost April, yeah. so it, it, this year may be approximately normal, and right. then we'll see next year. Right. Yeah, this is, um, I think, every conversation I've ever had with a founder or a technology person about H-1B visas, and this is where Trump, <clears throat> you know, I try to be bipartisan, um, but I also try to be rational. He does have a point. Um, when he says they are abused. Because I can tell you as an investor in technology, every time this conversation comes up, the starting point is, how much will it save us? How much are we gonna save? Because you can pay people less. Versus an American. Yeah. So if his position is, they're doing this to pay, Amer pay less than American workers demand for the same job, he's 100% correct. I hate to be the person in tech who actually agrees with Trump on something, but that is the truth. No, I think that, and there's other parts of it too, which is that there's like 65,000 of these things that go out to companies, right. and a lot of them are taken by folks who are doing like um, call center type jobs, right? right? Temp jobs, IT department jobs. It's IT stuff mainly, and uh, the other thing is, I think it's completely inhumane the process um, because companies are like, oh, well, this person's going to have to do whatever we want because if not, they get kicked out of the country. So you immediately go into employment in an indentured servitude situation where if you are going to do anything for your employer, it doesn't matter, work nights, weekends, whatever it is, you do not want to lose that status and get kicked out of the country. Yeah, I think that's a nice thing for you to say, but this is like a repeal and replace kind of situation. Yeah. So what is the alternative? Right, yeah. And we don't know. We haven't heard anything about that. Right, yeah. It's it, one of the, the ability to communicate, I think one of the biggest problems people have with this presidency is the communication methods. Like you want to have a more communicative president, but you would like to have the communication be substantive and intelligent, and the discourse has not been that way. Okay, let me take a pause for the cause here and thank my friends at IBM. They are dedicated to supporting startups and developers. I know this because they host our incubator at their amazing office on Market Street, and they love to build developer communities in cities around the world. They provide support, connections, and opportunities for growth, and they help thousands of developers build cognitive solutions with Watson. Yes, you know Watson, the computer that beat everybody at chess. Well, they've been doing AI and machine learning for a long time. A lot of my startups use Watson, and it works across every industry. And, you know, IBM gives free credits and support for one year to startups. They're incredibly supportive. They want to see little companies get big. And 
IBM is the largest supporter of my launch festival. Thank you so much. They have a lounge at the event. You can come and meet the team and get those Watson credits. Uh, IBM is dedicated to the startup community, and that's exemplified by the fact that they bring 10 startups to the launch festival every year as VIP guests. They give them those really good VIP tickets, and they give them demo pit, uh, pit tables. We do a lunch with me and other investors, and three of them will pitch on stage at the IBM Smart pa Camp competition, and one of those winners will get an investment from me of $25,000. What? I'm giving $25,000 to the winner? Yes, I am. And they'll come to my incubator, and they'll spend 12 week with, weeks with me and my team refining their amazing products. I really have to say thank you so much to my friends at IBM. You've been incredibly supportive of the startup community. Mm -hmm.